Seeing games be imported from the Super Nintendo to the Game Boy Advance was about right. Seeing games from much more advanced hardware, well, that's just crazy. I am the Game Collector and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I show you three ports of GameCube and Dreamcast games to the Game Boy Advance? Second Opinion Games First up, we have Silent Scope. Now, this was an arcade game, and about a year later, it was ported over to the Dreamcast. And I could not believe how great it still looked and played. Even without a light gun, your controller works just fine. One button lets you zoom in with your scope, and another button lets you take out terrorists with relative ease. If you can't find them right away, well, a little arrow points away. Occasionally, you'll even find super hot babes in here, and it will give you back a little bit of your life, because hot chicks always give you a little bit of life. The action comes fast and furious, and even on its easiest difficulty, can be a real challenge. Some of the bosses just feel nearly impossible, unless you could get a headshot, then sometimes they could be downed in a single bullet. And don't think you could just spray your shots everywhere. No, you're told to calm down every time you try to fire quickly, meaning every single bullet counts. And don't forget that occasionally you're going to have to reload too. Now, there is varied missions like a big car chase scene, or even nighttime missions where you have to take out circuit breakers to kill the lights, and then snipe people with your night vision goggles. This is an impressive game on the Dreamcast, and when they ported it over to the Game Boy Advance, they kept almost everything in here. The graphics are really shrunk down, and that's really understandable, but the gameplay is spot on. This time around, the right trigger fires your weapon. That means the same finger you would use to fire a gun is also the same one that pulls the trigger against these boss battles. They can still go down in one shot, and this football boss still remains incredibly difficult, if not impossible. No matter what console it's on, I cannot seem to beat him. Also, the gameplay seems to be quite a bit easier, so I could actually beat this game. Now, not all of the levels are in the Game Boy Advance version, like the driving mission seems to be totally left out, but that really doesn't hold it back at all. After all, you're playing Silent Scope on the go, and looking at the games side by side, it pretty much retains every bit of the magic that made it Silent Scope. And I gotta say, I actually prefer Silent Scope on the Game Boy Advance most of the time. Next up, we have Super Monkey Ball for the GameCube. It's a super cutesy monkey in a ball where you tilt the whole world type of game where you collect bananas and just try to make it to the exit as fast as possible. It is not an easy game, and there's also tons of mini games, whether it's a monkey fight, monkey billiards, monkey bowling, monkey freaking golf, and monkey target, which is loved by everyone. But the main meat and potatoes of the game is just moving your ball to a goal. And certainly, there's no way a game this graphically impressive with the super tight controls that it has could ever be ported to any system that's not as powerful. At least, that's what I thought until I saw Super Monkey Ball Jr. for the Game Boy Advance. Now, certainly some cuts had to be made. I don't have a second copy of this game, so I can't really look at the multiplayer. But what is here is still Monkey Fight, Monkey Bowling, which I happen to suck at every single bowling video game ever made. And this is no exception. They're just as hard no matter what. It is a bit easier on the GameCube version, though. And Monkey Golf is the same thing. I'm much better on the GameCube version, but look, it still looks and feels just like Monkey Golf. I cannot believe they did this right. However, you do miss out on Monkey Target, so let's go into the main game. And it feels very similar 
except the controls are a bit wonky. See, you just have your D-pad to move around, so things are gonna get really rough. You could hold one button to actually tilt the table slightly, and another one for more extreme tilts, which I find most of the time I'm not pressing any button whatsoever, but time is probably gonna run out in most cases if you're moving a little bit too slow, which you're gonna feel like you have to because your monkey is really hard to control on the Game Boy Advance. I think they really kind of knew this though because more of the difficult levels have been seemingly taken out and replaced with a couple of easier ones. But overall, this is just Super Monkey Ball on the go, and it graphically holds up about as well as you could possibly do for a 3D game of this caliber appearing on the Game Boy Advance. Now it's time to get a little crazy. Now when I first saw Crazy Taxi in the arcades, I was blown away. And I had to get it right away for my Dreamcast. And then later, I got it again for the GameCube. And seeing these games side by side, they're pretty much the same. Look at this jump that I'm trying to make. I could barely tell which is one and which is the other. Now the GameCube does look a little bit sharper, and I'm using regular standard AV cables to record this. So you can see side by side, they're pretty much the same game, but slightly different. And I mean very slightly. You still have all the same levels, all the same characters, and even when I play again and again, I can still only get C or Ds in my gameplay. So that means the difficulty is right about the same. And then it got ported to the Game Boy Advance as Crazy Taxi Catch a Ride. Now, seeing that they added a subtitle, you might think that this is a different game, but no. When you go into Crazy Box, you can clearly see that each of the levels are exactly the same, even though they might be a little bit easier. Certain moves are much easier to pull off, like the crazy boost and quartering and driving in general. And because of this, well, the game itself is a lot easier. For example, I could get S ranking my very first time ever playing this port. And, and I mean port, because this is a port of a port of a port. Because, I mean, it was a port of the GameCube version, which was a port of the Dreamcast version, which was a port of the arcade version of the game. Now, not all is good with this, because as you can see, the graphics are really chunky. Now, some of the sound clips are still in here. The licensed music has been removed, so it can be good to play on YouTube, thank God. However, what's here isn't necessarily very good, and the frame rate is darn near terrible. But this is a playable version of Crazy Taxi, and this still is the same city. And I know this because some things are very memorable, and they seem to still be here. So if you're familiar with its Big Brother counterparts, then you'll have no trouble playing this game. And it's actually pretty cheap as well, so I recommend you pick this one up. Also, Silent Scope is one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games ever made, so certainly pick that one up. And Super Monkey Ball Jr. might not be for everyone, but if you like seeing cute monkeys in balls, then it's a must-have. Overall, I can't believe that all of these games are on the Game Boy Advance because they came from crazy, more complicated hardware. And thank God they're here. But that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching.
hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it. And this wasn't even all of the games that I've seen ported from the Dreamcast and the GameCube over to the Game Boy Advance. And if you want to see more of Silent Scope, I did a full review of this as one of my first reviews I've done on this channel. So please click on that. And until later, I will see you again, guys. And as always, leave me a message because I can't wait to hear from someone. I'm quite lonely. Seriously, I read every single message and I, I just want to hear from you. Thanks. Bye.